Okay, guys, and let's go on with the third game that Darren or Pride sent me. Um, as I've already given some criticism in the first two games, I will now also give some uh, positive uh, feedback or positive input, some uh, constructive criticism on the third one. And again, uh, Pride is playing as the red player. He's Poles. Uh, Poles are very strong, uh, Sith for Arena, and um, that has several reasons. Um, uh, first of all, we get a little bit of gold when we're mining stone. So basically, if you want to make a castle drop, you can send your villagers that usually are on gold, you can send them on stone and mine enough gold, uh, mine enough stone for your castle, while also getting enough uh, gold to click up to the next age. So castle dropping with poles is definitely um, a very uh, sensible thing. So castle drops with poles are usually very fast and therefore also dangerous. And also the poles in the castles, we have um, a unit which is uh, the Obuk, or Obuch, uh, as we would say in German and in Polish. In Polish, I think we pronounce it Obuch. Uh, it's pretty, pretty close to the German pronunciation. And um, yeah, this can also kill rams and so on. So also their special unit is definitely not the worst to have in this scenario. And also we have uh, Slachter privileges or Slachter um, privilegien. So um, the advantage of that is basically that that uh, you can spam knights and cavaliers and we cost 60% gold less. So uh, we only cost 30 gold at this point. So you almost can spam uh, uh, cavaliers like... Um, a trash unit, which is very strong. Um, yeah, you already uh, also deleted uh, the, the gates again. Not too sure about this one, because this gate was also not too bad. It would save your Lumper Camp there. Uh, it's not as bad as in the last game, where you were deleting a huge chunk of stone wall that was actually protecting your secondary uh, economy. So this hasn't been that bad, but still I would have left these walls. As I said in the last video, um, as, long as, as long as walls are serving a purpose, uh, never delete them. But okay, the rest is looking kind of okay. Uh, still, you're having your cows here on this side. Uh, could already put one cow more under the TC. And also, you could push in the deer, but you didn't do that in the first and in the second game. But you sent me, so um, of course, I am not surprised that again, you don't push in the deer. But this is again something I want to point out. Because as I said, it's around 500 food resources uh, that you are not taking there. And... Yeah, it just can get you much faster to castle age, much faster into a castle drop um, uh, if, if you just take the deer. So I think it's uh, necessary to point that one out. And then we have also a blue player here who is playing as the Burgundians. And the Burgundians are a very strong Sith on Arena in my opinion. Or actually not only in my opinion, uh, most professional players would say the same. And uh, the reason behind that is just that the Burgundians um, are... A powerhouse, a late game powerhouse especially, and uh, most of the uh, bonuses are actually perfectly addressed for this map because uh, they can perfectly boom with the economy upgrades that are cheaper and uh, fast available. So you can for instance get the first woodcutter upgrade uh, still in dark age while you're advancing to feudal age or even you get it in dark age uh, still uh, not on the way uh, to feudal age. Um, yeah, this, is, this would be a nice idea. Because uh, not only do you save some some uh, food on it, which is not that important, but uh, the first uh, wood chopper upgrade, uh, it's it, uh, or the first wood cutter upgrade, uh, it pays off very fast. So um, having this one getting in uh, two or three minutes faster can probably get you another of uh, another 50 resources or 60, 70, maybe even 100 resources at the point that you reach castle age. So that is a nice bonus. Um, also, you can go into cheap Cavalier and Paladins. Uh, they are not discounted like the Polish, but uh, the upgrades themselves are discounted by 50%, uh, which is, is especially uh, important for the Paladin upgrade. So we have that. We have Helbedia, so we can also very nicely counter um, the Polish um, Cavalry. So that's nice. And also we have a bonus that Gunpowder units um, have more attack. So uh, the Hankoneers have an attack of 17 plus 4 in this case. And ten are already strong as we are, but with uh, dealing another five, uh, dealing another four damage, that usually is bonus damage um, because you have already pierced most armors, like a paladin armor. I think the only armor that you don't pierce is like like rams or some other siege weapons, maybe. Um, 
Yeah, seeing that, I would maybe even prefer the Burgundians in this matchup. Although uh, the Polish are also a strong self, and there is no doubt about that. There is no doubt about that, but yeah, so far it's all kind of looking okay, but you're not making a mill here and sending these guys there. Okay, okay, now you're making a full mark. Ah, uh, but this is a problem now. Uh, not that you're making a full mark, a full mark, the full mark is, is a nice building, but uh, the full mark uh, has uh, a bonus. And you see it in the square, if you build farms in the square, um, you already uh, can uh, drop off like, I think, 15% of your, uh, no, it's it's uh, 8% of what the farms have in total. So basically, if you have all upgrades um, and the farms give you 550 food, uh, with a full vac, you can immediately, immediately drop off um, 50 food. And with a normal form, it's like uh, 15 to 20 foot, something like that, um, that you will immediately uh, get after building the farm. And that's nice because uh, many players, also professional players like uh, Hera, we are skipping the first um, eco upgrade for the farms, which is uh, the horse collar. We uh, tend to skip it so that uh, uh, we have more resources for the moment. Uh, and we have more food to go up faster, to have a more aggressive build order, but uh, with a pole full work, you can build some farms around the full work later on with the first uh, upgrade on your farms. And that would basically, um, yeah, give you some extra food there and is uh, usually enough of an advantage to justify making, um, to justify getting the first uh, farm upgrade faster when you would get with a generic sieve. So the full marks are actually quite good, but uh, the problem here now is that you have built uh, your houses so that you cannot build farms there in this space. So you're not making maximum uh, advantage of the potential of your full work. So in retrospect, uh, these, these uh, houses were pretty bad because they are much too close to the to berries. And uh, next time you should rather build your houses around like here. So that in this space you can build uh, another one or two farms additionally. And uh, yeah. Uh, as I said, the full work is a good uh, is a good building, but uh, building your houses like that uh, just keeps you from making the most use of your full work there. So I don't I don't like those houses here, but it's still all looking quite nicely actually. Um, yeah, uh, you are still in the score lead, which is most likely due to scouting. I don't think the enemy has scouted that much yet. Oh, okay, okay, you also did some scouting. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, yeah, the enemy has some strange walls down here. I think uh, those walls I would probably delete as well. Because uh, they are not really helpful at all. Especially like, like, like these here. What are these serving? These are idiotic walls. Uh, sometimes we, I just create these walls. I don't know why it does that. Um, I mean, uh, this is also a problem in the CD version and in the HD version, that the walls are sometimes really stupid, but um, you have to consider that uh, the CD version came out in 1999, so it's almost like 25 years ago. And yeah, I mean, the definitive edition is from 2019, so it's just four years old, and I think uh, that uh, artificial intelligence has moved has moved uh, a long way since, since, uh, since 1999. And actually, the AI should be intelligent enough, or could be programmed intelligently enough, but it doesn't make such stupid walls. Um, but yeah, um, I guess if you want to understand uh, why the AI does make these stupid walls, we probably have to um, we have to ask some programmer at Microsoft. But uh, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, now everything is looking quite uh, quite fine. Now you're putting in the deers. Okay, that's nice. I didn't even expect you to do that anymore because, as I said in the other games, you didn't do that. But now you're eating your deer. I really like that because that's sure another lot of resources. And it's even pretty close to the TC. So that's also nice. You have a faster uptime to fuel age. I like that. I like that. Okay, this guy, he has not made a lumber camp yet. But he has made two mills. Ah, okay, no, sorry, he has a lumber camp around here. Uh, but now he goes on the straggler tree for whatever reason. Uh, personally, I would have deleted uh, these walls and put a lumber camp right in the knack uh, of, of uh, this one and this one. Uh, yeah, but uh, now he cut down his, his uh, tree there. Okay, whatever. Uh, let's have a look uh, if he at least got some uh, eco upgrades already. 
Ah, okay, at least he got uh, the farming, uh, uh, the, the woodcutter upgrade. Um, so he's making at least some so, some kind of use of uh, his his bonus. Okay, now he's a lot of idle villagers. Um, yeah, okay, okay. And you're starting to make your first farms. I very much hope that you have um, your first eco upgrade for the farms we searched already. And you don't have horse color, and I don't like that uh, because. It's it's not a mistake to build farms around UTC as poles, of course. I mean, um, UTC is a good drop-off place for farms. So it's not a bad idea to make that. But when you are poles, you will always want to prioritize to get your first uh, uh, farming upgrade at first. And then put your first farms around the fallback. Because that will just make your um, economy much more efficient and increase your, your drop-off rate um, much more. So I would have preferred that. Now you have some guys on uh, gold, but you actually already have enough gold for Castle Age. So I would actually pull these guys on stone here uh, to make to make your castle there. Yeah, but it's uh, all kind of looking okay. Let's speed this up. The enemy is still not in feudal age, which is uh, pretty late uh, with Burgundians, especially. Um, yeah, it took him 40 minutes, 30 seconds to go to Feudal Age. Uh, that's very, very slow. God, but you are now making your market and your blacksmith so you can advance to the next age. Ah, okay, okay, okay. And now you got the horse collar at least, so the farms that you're making around the fallback have at least their upgrade. And again, you're playing pretty defensively. Okay, uh, how did the scout get in? Okay, you deleted some walls and made a new wall. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, but again, I wouldn't have deleted these walls. They were not the best walls, but they also weren't the worst. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and now you're having a scout in your base. Okay, and the scout just converted. Uh, your monk just converted his scout. Okay, that's interesting. And you're getting the relics, and once again, the opponent doesn't do anything about that. Okay, now he sends in a spearman. Yeah, you could have uh, you could have uh, actually converted one of these spearmen, uh, and then you could have gone for another relic. Um, but yeah, okay. No, he's sending in his spearman and his scout there, so then that he can try to steal this relic, and he does. And uh, as it looks, as at this point, uh, he could also send in these scouts to this relic. Uh, he will probably get three of the five relics, which is a bit painful. But uh, then again, as a Poles, uh, this should be fine still because you have a better trash. You have uh, you don't have Helbert here, but your skirms are pretty decent actually. We only lack the last armor upgrade. And you also have a Winged Hassa with 9 plus um, 4 attack. So uh, the Winged Hassa, especially once we have the trample damage uh, from the castle tech, um, yeah, the Winged Hassa, we basically can strike like, like uh, gold units, especially versus... Uh, gunpowder units, as uh, we have an attack bonus with this gunpowder. So having two of the five relics is still okay, uh, I think. But now he's getting this monk too. Yeah, and as it looks, he will get this relic. And as I said, he will have three of the five relics. But that's still okay, because Burgundian, uh, because uh, the Polish trash is better than Burgundian trash, in my opinion. We have a much better Hassa. And also, um, yeah, your scrums are pretty decent. And now you walked in with uh, your monk there. Uh, you shouldn't have uh, let this happen. I would have. Um, I basically would have let this monk die in front of the the the, um, the, the gates there. But you made the mistake of running into your pikemen, so now it's actually a good deal for you. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, you cling his monk. Okay, interesting. Are you picking off his pikeman? He's attacking his your pikeman with with um, with his pikes instead of the cavalry. Okay. Yeah, the thing is just uh, when he went in India with his scouts, he could have gone to your woodline or to, to your gold, but uh, he wasted it, so it's okay. And it seems like you're getting three relics now. Okay, but you had some fighting for it, so it wasn't an easy easy game there. And what you should do now is uh, making a castle. Um, maybe with the military that you still have here. 
We we'll take this monk, take the scouts, take the pikemen. Uh, you could still go for an aggressive castle. And uh, if you put the castle here, I think that would make the most sense because then you can mine stone for another two castles. Plus you also get extra uh, gold from it. I don't know how, how much percent it is. Uh, stone miners generate gold in addition to stone. I think it's like 10% or something like that. But that would be enough to send out some, some obok. And now I notice another problem again that you had uh, in the first game especially. Which is that you're having a lot of gold, but you're not spending it. And seeing that the poles basically have pretty decent armor lasters with thumping that only lacking the last um, uh, armor upgrade. Uh, what I would do now with these resources is uh, making archers. Because uh, you have a lot of stone, uh, you have a lot of uh, gold and you have a lot of wood, but you have an extra. And uh, what can you create with uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, wood and gold? Uh, you can either make archers, or you can make siege weapons, or you can make some monks. But anyways, uh, no matter what you produce, it's of course always better to um, to to uh, invest it in some units. And I think that archers might be the goal here, because having uh, an offensive, uh, an, an, an aggressive castle here would have been nice. Some archers behind it, some siege behind it, and you could have made a lot of pressure here. But by now you're having your pikemen here, we are taking this fight, of course it's a better fight for the enemy because he just has uh, the bigger masses there. And he should be winning this fight very convincingly, yeah, especially as well as a monk healing them. And you're making this castle again, uh, I don't like that, you already made uh, this kind of castle right in the corner of your base in the last game. And uh, again, uh, why don't you put that castle here? Because uh, you would co uh, completely uh, protect this side and uh, you would uh, save the stone here or, or uh, protect the stone here, protect the gold here. Uh, I much rather would have liked a castle in this spot. But at least you're, you're making a castle, so that's, that's something. And now, theoretically, the, uh, the castle and all the rest that you already have, you could already think about going to Imperial Age. Uh, the blue player is already in Imperial Age. Uh, let's see, maybe he makes some uh, trebuchets already. No, he's not making any trebuchets. But I actually think uh, with uh, Borgandians. Uh, what you would, would want to play here now is um, going Helbedir versus the cavalry. Versus the uh, pole cavalry. So I would uh, make uh, Helbedir uh, plus Skirmisher. And uh, I would also make uh, some Bombard Cannons. And then try with gunpowder to to uh, uh, get you down. Also, he could be making some uh, hand cannons because they're especially strong. He also has a lot of uh, uh, gold left, so he could do that. He also has a lot of stone. Um, I think what what would be making sense is taking uh, like ten villagers, uh, maybe taking uh, these villagers that are on stone right now, and taking some of the wood villagers, uh, especially as he already has three thousand wood. He doesn't need any more wood as, at this point. Um, I think he should have taken uh, these wood villagers around here at the back of the base and send them in here, make a castle here and then push with a gunpowder and helbedir. So that would have been my plan for the thing. Okay, but let's switch uh, back to you. You're on the way to Imperial Age, uh, that's something. Yeah, but again, you're very inactive. You have your army here, we're not doing anything. Uh, you could be scouting, that's uh, the big problem that you all said in the first game. Uh, without scouting information, you don't know what the enemy is doing. And why don't you take one cavalry, one light cavalry, and do a scouting here to see whether he is on the rest and whether he is making some army, and take another guy uh, who's scouting here just to see what he is doing. Because, yeah, uh, as I said, these guys aren't doing anything. And uh, light cavalry, they're basically uh, just the improvement or uh, the, the next stage of the upgrade of, of um, scout cavalry. So, that's basically still like like their main job. I mean, yes, of course, we are killing some monks, and yes, we can pick off some villagers and do some raids. But uh, I, I mean, they are still scouts to some degree. So um, what you should be doing here is uh, using them as scouts. Because uh, you, you don't know anything about that. If I put in the Fog of War, you don't know that there is a castle. Here could be a TC, for instance. Uh, here could be a TC. Uh, maybe here could be a TC. There are so many options that the enemy, uh, that the enemy has, so many things that you could have built up at this point. And yeah, if you if you just don't don't scout at this point, um, 
Yeah, but it's bad because you don't know what the enemy is up to, and uh, especially on on high level, uh, I have some friends that are like uh, 700, 1800 Elo in Definitive Edition, so well above 2000 Elo in in uh, HD version, and uh, they always tell me that especially at a high level of gameplay, um, scouting is a very important thing, and uh, the initial scout that you get is very um, is, is is very uh, valuable. So if you lose your initial scout very early on, uh, that's a bad thing, of course. Okay, uh, you could have made another full mark uh, around here, actually, in the back of the base, to then spam Wing uh, uh, Tassa. At least that is what I would have done. And again, you are still floating so much gold, so much wood here. Uh, okay, not, not that much, much, much anymore, but uh, still uh, having a lot of gold. And you're not making any army with that. I mean, as Poles, you also have gunpowder. You could make um, some... Some bombard cannons. We have bombard cannons as far as I know. <coughs> and now the pole uh, bombard cannons are not as good as uh, the, the Burgundian bombard cannons, but I still would make them. Yeah, but now he's making Helvet here. That's the right uh, choice. Uh, for some reason, he still doesn't make a castle here. But uh, you could also actually make another castle. You could, uh, with, your, with all your gold, you could buy a 200 stone. And make a castle here and uh, go to the middle of the map. I think that would be a very sensible idea. But at least you have Wing Tassa now and can slowly start to spam these guys. Yeah, but I also think your TCs aren't producing. Yeah, all your TCs aren't producing. Um, I think you could easily still make uh, like 15 to 20 villagers uh, to have more economy. To have a um, higher economy uh, uh, volume. And with that, uh, to to um, yeah, basically just just win more trash. Let's have a look at the enemy at his pop. Uh, he's at 106. Okay, so he actually has has less pop than you at this point. Uh, so that's at least something. But I guess he's also not producing anymore. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. See at uh, the blue player. No, he's not making any more villagers. He also could still easily uh, make use of another. 30 to 40 villagers, so both of you are not making uh, use of the full potential of your of your uh, economy. But at least uh, now you're making some uh, bombard cannons, and I like that. Yeah, but still, uh, you probably don't know anything about this map here. You just know that there is a Hassa, okay. Also didn't get the, the uh, blacksmith upgrades for that, for whatever reason. Yeah, now we're just sending out one villager. And as you can see, uh, this villager was of course not protected. What you need here is uh, murder holes for your castle. And um, yeah, making castle here, making murder holes, then mine with resources. And also, Bracer would be nice on your castle to um, uh, have a bit, little bit uh, stronger castles. And now you're also making uh, Cavalier. I'm pretty convinced at this point you have the Slachter privileges, probably. Yeah, you have a slaughter privileges. Um, I'm not too quite. I'm, I'm not too sure about uh, uh, taking in into Cavalier and Wing uh, um, uh, Tassa uh, both at the same time because they are quite, both quite gold intensive. I basically would have made a decision for, for one of these two. But yeah, it's okay. You're making your Cavalier. You're making your Hassa. Uh, you could take these guys out. Yeah, take them out of the base. Uh, because these villagers are completely unprotected, why don't you take uh, these Hussars and put them in the map to um, start fighting his Hussar? I think that would have been a good plan. And also, if, if you knew that he had so many uh, helmet here already standing here, um, you should be making uh, two of the archery ranges and make some skirmishers, because uh, his main army at this point is helmet here. And uh, if, if he mainly makes Helbedir, of course, uh, Hassa and uh, um, Cavalier are not the best counters there. So uh, I think if you had done some uh, skirmishes at this, this point, it would be much more helpful. And now uh, you're sending in your Cavalier into masses of uh, Helbedir. And here, yeah, the Polish uh, Cavalier, they are much cheaper, especially by gold cost. Um, if you have a look at that, but they are not cheap enough that you can waste them like that. And now you also send in your Hassa here. And you are winning this fight, I think. You're kind of winning this fight. But you have lost so many, so many units here. 
but I think this was a very, very bad uh, trade up for you. But okay, now at least you're getting aggressive on the map. I like that. Uh, you're getting out your cannons. Um, you're shooting down the stables. I like that. Um, after shooting down the stables, uh, you should shoot down the castle, of course. So it's not all bad, but as I said, there were some critical mis mistakes and there are some critical problems. And once again, you don't have any lumber camp, so you have very ineffective economy uh, with very long transport ways for your resources to come in. Why don't you make a lumber camp here and a lumber camp here? And already your eco is like 20% better, or at least your eco is like 20% better. Uh, do you have uh, the upgrade now? Oops, one second. Do you have the upgrade now for the trample damage? Okay, so you have the trample damage upgrade. That's something. And you're shooting down his stable. Okay, I like that. And he's now making Custelier. Uh, I don't know why he's taking into Paladin and Custelier at this point, because he already knows that you're basically just making um, cavalry. And he had some very good trades econo uh, from economical... Uh, on an economy standpoint um, so far with his Helbedir. Uh, if I was the blue player, I would just make more Helbedir. Maybe add uh, some more barracks. Yeah, just add uh, three more barracks, three or four more barracks here and buy conscription in the castle to then make Helbedir. Yeah, because uh, your your uh, Ming Tassa are uh, actually doing kind of decent versus Paladin or kind of okay still with the attack of 9 plus, uh, 9 plus uh, 4 so we have 13 attack we do kind of decent and against Custelier we also do kind of decent uh, if you factor in the gold cost ah uh, yeah it's, it's a really strange choice of a blue player to go into Paladin and Custelier now because he just could make uh, Helbedir and it would be much more effective yeah, but whatsoever, uh, he, you now make your, your castle here, I like that, this is exactly the point where you should put your castle. Um, at this point, actually, where you have already killed his castle, um, it would be uh, sensical to make another castle here, so that you can uh, put some uh, trebuchets here and uh, enforce more more um, more pressure. Um, also, he's building another castle right in, in the corner of uh, of, uh, this, uh, of of this his of his um, of his map here, of his uh, of his town. This is really weird. Uh, actually, I, I don't really see these castles at uh, 1000 ELO or, or, or uh, 1100 ELO. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's an 800 ELO thing to make uh, these castles in the corners of, of your arena. Yeah, I, I don't know, maybe it's an 800 ELO thing. I don't play with ELO. Uh, because um, when, when I started playing Definitive Edition, I already had some experience in HD version. And I was already uh, quite... Um, yeah, quite decent at the game, so when I started playing Definitive Edition, I was already at 950, 1000 ELO, something like that. So I cannot really tell how 800 ELO uh, players play in Definitive Edition on Arena. But I just noticed these weird castles, and it's kind of strange actually if you think about it. This guy, he didn't have any uh, siege support for this castle. He already lost his castle, but he was like, oh, you killed my castle, I make another castle in exactly the same spot where I built the first castle. Really strange because all of his time you had map control here as a red player and you easily could have shot down his castle with your bombard cannons. So, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, ma ma making another castle just in, red, uh, in, in the same spot is really weird. I mean, if he made another castle like here to protect his, his town, uh, that's making sense because you cannot, uh, you cannot drop this down so easily. But yeah, he, he just made the castle in the same spot. Uh, that's, that's not the cleverest way. And at this point, I think it's obvious um, that a trebuchet would have been better because uh, you just have more range there. And yeah, just take your cavalry out of the, the castle fire. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, that's better, that's better. Yeah, but so far, looking kind uh, decently, actually, there's still a lot of resources here at the site that you are completely ignoring for whatever reason. But you're taking the stone, you have your relics, you have your fallbacks, you have your farm economy. Uh, you still could produce more uh, units, so uh, these stables could actually all be producing still. You have a lot of food, you have almost 3000 food. And here you have 7 stables that could all be produced in Mechio Hassa. But uh, here you have even uh, more stables. But um, as I said, uh, what I would have liked to see is actually skirmisher. 
But considering that we en enemy doesn't make a Helbit here, which would have been the right choice uh, for this game, um, yeah, it's kind of okay that you don't have skirmishers. But uh, I think the more correct play would be uh, three archer ranges into skirmishers. Okay, but now you're expanding here and you're making more stables. But the funny thing about this is uh, that the old stables are not producing. So I, I think you're already having 12 stables here. Yeah, you're having 12 stables here. I don't I don't think you need any more stables. Uh, I don't think you need any more stables. You just should be producing more out of the old stables. Do you have conscription at least? Yeah, you have conscription. <coughs> Yeah, you, you shouldn't be making more stables at this point. Just produce out of, out of them. Uh, what you usually see at this elo... Uh, also, this is not good. You should go back to the castle fire so that you get uh, uh, range support from your castle. Now you're fighting under his castle and this is, of course, a much better situation for him. Uh, you better shift taking these hussars and put them back uh, down to the castle fire. Yeah, but... Uh, The normal mistake that you see on this elo is, uh, yeah, and this is a very bad fight for you now. The normal mistake is uh, that uh, people are basically not making enough military uh, uh, buildings. They are making like one or two military buildings. And of course, their production then is way too slow. Because, uh, yeah, if the enemy makes eight production uh, buildings and you only make two, um, it's much easier for the enemy to mess his um, numbers. Now you're making barracks. Why are you making barracks? Doesn't really make sense. I mean, you could be making champions, but they're not the best. They don't have gambesons. And then you have your O-Book. And if you want to go for infantry, I personally would prefer the O-Book. Um, they cost the same uh, amount of gold, but uh, we have a better values, uh, the, the better stats here. We have uh, 95 um, hit points. And yeah, uh, I think uh, if your Poles O-Book is a much better infantry option. And um, as I said, uh, infantry is not that much of a good idea at this point. I would prefer skirms, Mingtasa, and some trebuchet. Yeah, but uh, you're making more of these production buildings. But I think uh, with a pop cap of 200, uh, making uh, how many steels do you have? You have like uh, 19 stables, I think. Yeah, making 19 stables, that's, that's uh, way too much, of course, and no skirmishers. Yeah, now you're fighting versus Helbit here with, uh, with uh, Hassa. It kind of still works because uh, you have the higher numbers. So with, with higher numbers, you can still win that. But of course, yeah, skirms would have been nicer. And the enemy is making some trebuchets, okay. But of course, uh, he cannot win this when they are unprotected and you're making your bombard cannons. You're shooting down his castle, but it's looking decent so far. Yeah, I know you're again fighting with Hassa versus uh, Helvedia. And the group here is losing his castle, so he taps out with a GG. Yeah, overall, I think uh, it was uh, a deserved win for you. I think uh, you deserved uh, winning this one because the blue player did a lot of very um, obvious uh, mistakes, like not making more Helvedia and building uh, his castle back in the same spot. Um, what you both should have to improve is map control and scouting. It's like you both made an army in the back of your base, but you didn't look at all what the enemy is making. It's like, oh yeah, just give me another 15 minutes and then I will attack. Um, that's of course not how you play on a higher level. I mean, I'm not on a professional level with 1100 ELO, but uh, 1100 ELO is, is starting to be the level where players are kind of uh, profound with, with, their, with their army use and so on. So, that's, so people who are playing at around 1100, 1200, 1300 ELO, um, let's put it like that, those are decent players, um, they are better than 90% of the people that are playing the game. Or um, actually take into account all the people that do not play ranked and never played uh, multiplayer, they just play campaigns and single player stuff. Uh, I would actually say that uh, people starting from my um, level are probably the top 10 to top 5% of the, the players. 
Yeah, of course, uh, at a certain level, you wouldn't play it like that. Uh, it wasn't overly bad, but now you also made a lot of barracks. So you put in like 700 wood on these barracks. And of course, in late game, um, that's not that bad. Uh, and again, no lumber camps. I don't like that. No lumber camps. That's not good. I mean, it's not that bad to waste 700 uh, uh, wood on, on, on your barracks here. But you didn't make any infantry at all, as far as I can see. So you didn't make any infantry, but built this, these barracks. Then you made uh, this, this shitload here of, of stables, but you didn't produce units out of it. Or um, uh, a lot of the time the stables were idle at least. So that's, that's not good, of course. But yeah, I think I pointed out the biggest mistakes that you've uh, made here. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't the worst game overall, but uh, some of the things uh, that you made could have easily cost you the win. Um, yeah, of course, at, at this, um, uh, at this uh, ELO, uh, mistakes like that are not that crucial. But I think every player who is at around 950,000 ELO would uh, very well have been able to uh, punish these mistakes. Especially as some of them were not, not exactly small mistakes. See. Yeah, but uh, of all the three games that we have seen so far, I think that uh, this was my favorite because I think you've played this one uh, the best actually. The second one was a little bit painful to watch and the first one also had some pretty major mistakes or, or some pretty major mistakes even although you won that one. Yeah, I think this one was so far the best game uh, that you've played here. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, a big problem is of course and I want to uh, line that out another time. Uh, you had a lot of gold and wood floating around. If you had just taken all these resources and made some crossbows, uh, this would have been a game changer. Because uh, if you think back, uh, the guy at this point, he only had like 30 halberdier. And you had enough resources for at least 20 uh, crossbowmen. And with a force of 20 crossbowmen, if you had done some scouting, you could easily have walked in and killed all of his army. And you would have had uh, like uh, the whole map control. And with the whole map control, you could have put a castle here. And uh, yeah, mind the stone and do some aggressive pushing. So, cannot connect to Steam. Please check your internet connection. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, so, so that, that's a thing. And uh, this was a thing that uh, went through all the three games. That is why I'm also stressing this again now. Uh, you had at some point in the game uh, an excess amount of gold and also an excess amount of wood, and you didn't do anything with it. And as I said, um, if you want to be the best player or the best possible player, or at least you, you try to be uh, going into this direction, um, a big thing for you would be spending your resources because you had so many wood, so, so much wood floating around. Uh, just make three or four archery ranges, make some crossbowmen, and you would very much have dominated uh, the game at this point. But yeah, as I said in uh, the other two games as well, uh, if you have 2,000 gold, that's no use for you. Uh, if you make 20 uh, monks with it, that's use. Uh, yeah, that's useful for you, for you. Although I don't know if uh, with a Polish I would want to go that heavily into monks. Yeah, we don't have the worst um, tech tree considering mon monks, but we don't have uh, uh, atonement, uh, which means that yeah, basically, uh, if he makes monks, he can easily convert your monks, and you can't do anything about that. Uh, but uh, Having 20 monks on the field, even uh, if uh, the enemy just has, has died calf and the monks are not really much of a use, having 20 monks is still better than having 2,000 gold because uh, resources on the bank, they don't, um, they are not of use to you. So please keep that in mind. Spend your resources because uh, that's, a, that's one of the biggest mistakes that I'm seeing here. If you uh, made more production buildings, more archery ranges, made some crossbows and just spent these resources, you would very well have dominated this guy because he didn't have any army at this point. And uh, yeah, you just would have, you just should have used the resources that you have. And uh, I don't think that he would have had a nice answer to that. And maybe uh, also make a siege workshop earlier, make two or three mangonels and shoot down his walls with your mangonels. And I think uh, if you had, uh, if you had made uh, like uh, 20 crossbowmen and two or three mangonels at this point, and you definitely had the resources to do so. Um, yeah, you easily could have attacked his walls, shot down, uh, shot down his walls, and yeah, when you are with 20 uh, crossbow in his eco, and I think if you had done that, some uh, earlier pressure, some earlier stress, making some units and attacking him, 
Um, this guy probably wouldn't have any answer. Uh, he, he wouldn't have had. He wouldn't have had. Now we have it. Okay. He wouldn't have had any answer to uh, this kind of threat. So um, yeah, if you just make some some uh, army at this point, I think the game is pretty much over. Yeah, but over overall, uh, it was kind of okay what you made. You made some bigger mistakes. But you also made some nice things. I liked uh, the consistent attacking with uh, the bombard cannons here. But yeah, uh, two things you have to uh, you have to uh, look for: uh, balance your eco, spend your resources, do some scouting, and also make the right units. Because um, yeah, countering Helvetia with, Cav with, with Cavalier and and uh, with Vingtasa is of course not the best idea. And I think I wouldn't even have, have tacked into starter privileges uh, at this point. I think um, a whole uh, trash army, uh, just wing Tassa and uh, Skirmisher would have been fine. And if you had taken your gold into siege weapons and just uh, made a lot of um, uh, uh, trebuchets and bombard cannons, that should have been fine, I think. Or maybe some onagers, I don't know what the poles have. Oh, we even have siege ram. Yeah, siege ram would also have been very nice. Could have made some siege rams there. Good, yeah, but that's, that's about that, I think. I think uh, I could probably give you some input. Um, also, I don't really like those castles. They're not the worst castles, but also they're not the best castles. Yeah, just be more aggressive, make some aggressive castles, uh, get some map control, do some scouting, spend your resources. And I'm pretty sure that uh, if you take all the uh, advice that I've given you in these three videos, if you take all this into account, that your elo should uh, easily boost uh, from 800 to 900 or 950. So um, it was basically like uh, three or four mistakes that you did all the time of it, that you were repeating all the time. And if you uh, try to not make that the next time, and you yeah, you just take uh, this criticism into account, I think that should boost, boost your elo by 100 points at least. Good, uh, that having been said, I hope the video was uh, helpful for you. I hope you can uh, make something out of it. I hope you can... Uh, put this into your next games whenever you're playing again. So, um, yeah, as I said, I hope this is helpful for you because I've now recorded about two hours of video and I still have to edit these videos for YouTube and upload it. So I think I spent like uh, five hours into this um, if I take everything into account. So I hope that at least it was helpful to some point. Yeah, just work on, on those three, four things that I've mentioned the most. And I think you're on a good way so far. And yeah, uh, maybe if you want to and you have some crazy games in the future, I don't want to uh, cast all of your games, of course, because you are seem to because you seem to play uh, pretty often. So uh, I, I won't cast all of your games, but if you have some games that are crazy or some games where you don't know what you made wrong or what your mistakes were, you can give it to me and I would like to uh, see that. Also, if you want to, we can do a coaching session, so a live coaching session where basically I tell you what to do and I can tell you in uh, in real time what your mistakes are and, and why not why not uh, why you should not uh, make these things. So if you want to, we can do also that at some point. Um, but yeah, as I said, I think this is on a, going on a good way and just take my um, a criticism system into account and uh, this should be going fine. Also, a uh, funny thing, uh, the enemy uh, did make some he did make some lumber camps, so he had uh, a, a bit of a better eco at this point. Or at least a bit of a better food, uh, wood eco. Yeah, here the same. Just make one new lumber camp here and you're good to go so far. Good, but that's all having been said. Before I repeat myself for the 10,000th time. Uh, 10,000th time. Um, yeah, the age. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, thanks for watching again. I hope this video was helpful for someone. I hope you could take something out of it. Um, if you found it helpful, it would be very nice to get a thumbs up from you. And if you have some input at all, you can write it in the comments. And yeah, that having been said, you can also subscribe to my channel. I'm going to make more uh, Edo uh, uh, coaching videos. I'm also going to make more TeamSpeak videos and so on and so on. So there should be a lot of things that are interesting on my channel. We also are making uh, tests at my channel. We are testing uh, hand cannons, one versus one, and so on, or awesome. 50 versus 50. We have been testing camels, we have been testing calf archers. Uh, most of the videos are in German at the point, but uh, if more people uh, come and uh, yeah, request videos and uh, more English people come or more English speaking people come, 
Uh, we can very well also make our videos in English in the future. So uh, most of the videos are in German, but we can also make uh, videos in English uh, if enough people re if enough uh, people request it. So um, yeah, if you're interested in that, you can subscribe to us and leave a comment. And that having been said for the uh, fourth or fifth time, uh, thanks again for watching. And it would be nice to see you in the next time. So have a nice day or evening. And see you in my future videos.